Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Flaws, back again with another video. And today we're going to do a quick unboxing of the brand new HTC One M8. Alright, so let's get right into it. First off, let's talk about the price. Now, off contract from Sprint, this will run you $650. Plus tax, plus activation, altogether you'll be looking at $800. $806 to be exact. Now, is this phone worth $800? My answer is, most definitely. All right, this is definitely a flagship device, and you're definitely going to feel like you're getting your money's worth. So let's take a look at the presentation. Real nice. Y'all know I like a nice box. Who doesn't? HTC Zoe. HTC Boom Sound. It has motion launch. HTC Blink Feed. And the Duo camera. That's the two cameras on the back. Now, y'all know I'm not really heavy into specs and all of that, but since this is an unboxing video, let's just throw up the specs that they have on the back of the box. All right, now the platform is running the latest version of Android, the KitKat, and it's also running uh, HTC Sense number six. Okay, so you got HTC Blink Feed, the newer version. The CPU, Qualcomm Snapdragon 801, clocked at 2.3 gigahertz quad core. What does that mean? The phone is super smooth, super fast, zero, zero lag. All right, the memory. Now, I got the 32 gig version, as you can see right there, but... um. This is also available in a 16 gig version, and this also has expandable memory. So get the 16 gig, get the 32 gig, and get yourself a big memory card, and you have as much storage as you want. The display, 5 inch, full 1080 HD display. All right, so 1080 HD. The display on this is beautiful. The camera, now you got the dual camera with ultra pixel, the BSI sensor, pixel size 2.0, sensor 1.3, blah, blah, blah. What does all of that mean? We'll get into that in the real review, but all that means is the camera is really nice on this. Now, I hear a lot of people in the videos say that they don't like the camera too much, but you got to tweak it and all that. And I had this phone for a couple of days now, and the camera is really not bad at all. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. All right, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, Bluetooth, stereo, blah, 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 all of that. You, know, you already know the specs. So let's pop it open and see what it looks like. Now, like I said, I've been using this for a couple of days. So, of course, we threw it back into plastic just for dramatic effect. But this is what it's going to look like when you get it into your house. All right. It's going to be in a box like this, plastic on it. Let's take that out. Now, you get the HTC Advantage. What does that mean? 50 gigs of free online storage. Android software update commitment. That means that they promise they're going to keep pushing out the latest versions of Android, not like some other phones that once you get it, you basically stuck with that version unless you're going to root it and all that. So HTC definitely stepped up their game as far as with the Android updates. Now, keep in mind, this phone does come in the Google Play version, which is just stock Android. But me personally, I'd rather get the official version. And if I want stock Android, I'll just root it and throw a stock ROM on there. All right. Also, um, I went with the... Uh, the gray color. Now it comes in silver and it also comes in gold. The amber gold. But I went with the gray gunmetal color. It just looks a little bit sleeker to me. Inside the box, you get your SIM ejection tool. Now, this ain't really a big deal. If you lose this, just use a paper clip or anything, you know, a little little if you got a little glassy screwdriver, anything will stick in that little hole and pop it out. But keep this anyway. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. You get the usual books and shit. No reason to open that up. You get your wall adapter. Standard wall adapter. Nothing fancy. Even though this one does look better than a lot of ones. This has the matte finish with a glossy look. So that is kind of cool. You get your micro USB adapter. You already know what that is. And you get some headphones. Now, I'm a big fan of phone companies giving out free headphones. Not necessarily free because, you, you know, you're paying for the phone, but throwing some headphones in as an accessory. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Now, these have the black and red look. They look like they're Beats headphones, but everybody knows that HTC is no longer partnered up with Beat, but, uh, Beats uh, by Dre, uh, Beats Audio. So these are just regular headphones, but they have that nice black and red look to it. All right. Now, personally, a lot of people ask me, do I prefer these or do I prefer the iPhone headphones? I prefer these kind of headphones when you're wearing them and you're working out in the gym or you're riding your bike or whatever. These tend to stay in your ear better than the iPhone ones. All right. So we'll test the sound on these in a minute. But I already had a bunch of HTC headphones. I already know these headphones are go. All right. So that's everything you get inside the box. It is what it is. Now, a lot of people ask me, why do I save the box? Why do we even talk about the box? Simple. Right now, I got my old HTC M7. 
Now I want to get rid of this. I'm, I'm definitely going to sell it now since I got the new one. So what would you, if you on the market to buy a phone from Craigslist or eBay or whatever, what would you rather buy? Somebody selling a phone just like this, like here, here goes your phone, or somebody selling you a phone in the box with the books looking all nice and crispy. Do the math yourself. That's why I saved the box. That's why I like nice boxes and all that. Because I'm sooner or later, y'all know phones coming out every, you know, every six months, every year. Sooner or later, you're gonna want to get rid of your old phone. So keep the box and sell it and try to get maximum dollar for your old phone. So now let's talk about the HTC One M8. Right off the back, a lot of people been talking about the build quality on this phone, and I have to agree with everybody's out there, all the blogs, all the other videos, and all that. This phone has the best build out of any Android phone on the market right now, period. All right? Now, the M7, before, this, before the M8 released, the M7 was my favorite constructed Android phone pretty much of all time. Not only because of the speakers on the front, but just that, that, that nice premium aluminum build to it, even though it had a little bit of plastic on the sides and all that, but it just has a premium build quality feel to it. I know y'all hear that all the time, premium build. What does that mean? It just means if you're going to spend $700 for a phone, do you want to get it and it feels like cheap plastic junk? You know, even though we all know with drop tests and all that, the plastic Samsung phones, they don't break, but they just don't feel like they're worth $800 or $700. Everybody likes to build of the iPhones, because of that, you know, that nice metal build to it. So when the HTC came out with the M7, this was my favorite built Android phone. But now that we got the M8, this one is even built better than the, the M7. All right, this one has more aluminum to it. It doesn't have the plastic on the sides. Best build quality out there, in my opinion. So let's look around the phone real quick. On the front, you got your dual speakers. Which, like I said, which makes this the best built phone. I don't know why all phones don't put the dual speakers on the front. It just it just makes it louder and easier to hear videos when, when you're holding the phone. You're not covering up the speakers. I can't I can't stress enough how much I'm digging the speakers on the front. You got a five megapixel camera on the front, which is sensor. Five megapixels for the front. That's perfect for Skype. Perfect for Uvo. Perfect for all the selfies. All right. So all y'all cats and ladies that's into the selfies, five megapixels. Get your bathroom photos on. You'll be doing great with that. All right. If you look on the side of the phone, you got your micro SD card slot. Now, you need to, this one doesn't just use your finger. You got to use that SIM ejection tool. So, you stick that in there. Pop out your micro SD card. You got your volume up and down buttons. And that's it. On the other side, you got your nano SIM card. You need the tool for that one also. Nothing else. On the top, now you got an IR blaster and your power button. Now, one thing I will say is they moved the power button from the left side to the right side, which is kind of, you know, kind of confusing if you got used to using your M7. It's going to take you a minute to get used to that. But um, it just, this power button feels better than the one on the M7. And as you can see now, it's a big giant IR, IR, IR blaster on the top. So it's probably give you more range when you're in your house using it as your remote control. If you look in the back of the phone, you have your dual uh, LED flash. Now, if you look closely, you can see it's two different colors. One is like an orange and one is kind of a yellowish color. Now, HTC claims that this is supposed to give you a more natural look when you're taking pictures. And one thing I will say about HTC cameras, they've always been pretty good in low light situations. Not the best in, in, the, you know, in the bright lights. But um, now they claim that this dual flash right here will give you a better light sensor. When you're taking pictures at night, the flash will make it look more natural. So they claim we'll put it to the test. You got your four ultra pixel camera on the back, the duo camera. All right. Now, like I said, I'm not going to get into too much specs and all that megapixels, ultra pixels, sensors and all that. The question is, does the camera take nice pictures? That's all we really want to know. Because if you're not really a photographer, you don't know about the white balance. You don't know about the ISO. You don't know about the ambient light settings and all that. You don't really know about that. and You don't really care. When you're at dinner and you want to take a picture to post on Instagram, you got your lobster tail, does the picture come out nice? And the answer is yes. So the camera does its job. The dual camera now is supposed to give you, now if, you, if you're into photography, you know how the pictures come out with the, uh, the picture looks close from the front and the blurry background. Y'all you, you, you know what I'm talking about. You can actually do this with, with this phone and we'll play with it more and get into that in the real review. That's just a little, some people say it's a little gimmicky or whatever, but um, if you're into photography and you're into pictures, you're going to have a lot of fun with this camera because there's a lot of features and options that you can use with it. All right. Now, another thing is they moved the headphone jack from the top to the bottom. 
So you got your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the bottom and you got your micro USB adapter. So that's where you plug it in to charge it up. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the um, differences between the original HTC M7 and the new M8. First off, let's look at the size now. If you look at the size comparison, the M8 is a little bit taller and a little bit wider. But you got to remember, the, the, the screen is bigger. All right, so now you got five-inch screen diagonally. If you look at the bottom, you see now you got the headphone jack on the M8 as opposed to just the mic and the uh, micro USB adapter. One thing that changes, now, even though the M7 had plastic on the sides and the metal on the front, now this one is actually the opposite. This one is the unibody design, but now you have plastic on the bottom. But the plastic doesn't feel like plastic. You, if you, you know, if you don't really look at it too much or you don't really touch it like that, you won't even know that it's plastic. All right, so that's the only plastic you have is on the front and a little bit of plastic where they put the antennas at. If you look at the top, like I said, now you got the power button. Switch places. Let's put them side by side. Okay, so on the M7, you had the power button on the left. On the M8, you got it on the right now. But the power button was actually the IR blaster on the M7. Now you have the big IR blaster and the power button. Headphone jack on the top, headphone jack on the bottom. If you look at the back of the phone, you see now you have the dual LED flash as opposed to the uh, single LED flash. Even though this one had the Beats audio, now you got boom sound with the M8. Personally, I can't really tell the difference. And to be 100% honest with you, the HTC M8 is louder than the M7. So Beats audio, I like that, you know, the logo looks nice and all that, but does it really make a difference? No. The M7, the M7 is lower than the M8. All right, so HTC claims that this is 20% louder, and I have to agree, it's definitely loud. When you first get this phone and take it out the box, you're going to be amazed at the sound. Trust me, it's extra, it's extra loud. Now let's take a look at some of the features real quick. Now, like I said, I'm not going to turn this into a full review. I'll just show you all some of the features that caught my eye fresh out the box. First off, the motion gestures. Now, if you got your phone flat on the table or anywhere, you can double tap to turn the screen on. So this way, if I see I got 15 new items, I can just double tap the screen just to take a quick look. Now, if you all seen like the Samsung phones, you know how you do the Passover and you get it like that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it takes a little bit while, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit to activate it. Now you get double tap. And it comes on and off. Now, one thing I will say, this phone has zero lag, but the motion gestures don't work 100% of the time. Now, is that a big deal? Not really. I'm pretty sure HTC will have an update to probably uh, fix that. But the motion gestures don't work all the time, as you've seen for yourself. I would say with the tap feature, this one works 90% of the time, but some of the other features don't work all the time. Like this, for, for instance, I'll show you. If you swipe down, you're supposed to be able to get to your voice control. So let's swipe down. See, nothing. So sometimes with this phone, I notice that you have to power it on, then power it back off. Now let's try that again. Okay, that's your voice command right there. Now if you swipe to the side, it takes you immediately to blink feed. If you swipe to the other side, it's supposed to take you to immediately to your home screen. All right, so you've seen for yourself, the motion gestures don't work all the time. I, I will say that right now. And I've been, like I said, I've been playing with this phone for a couple of days. The one feature that always works to me is the double tap. But sometimes the swipe to side to side, that doesn't always work. Straight to, straight to blink feed. Straight to voice command. And if you swipe up, it'll take you to your last used app. So say I'm on my Google Play, uh, Google Plus, and I close the phone. If I swipe it up, it'll take me right back to Google Plus. All right, so swipe up, takes you to your last screen you was using. Swipe down, opens the phone immediately, right to voice command. So some of the voice controls don't work too good. Now, I was trying this one in the store yesterday. You hold the phone to the side, and you press the volume button, and it takes you directly to your camera. All right, so let's, let, me, let me show you how that again. So now while the phone is off, you put it to the side, press the volume button, right to the camera. Now, it's working good right now. Yesterday, I was outside in the store trying to take some pictures, and um, that feature was a little bit buggy. 
really wasn't working too great for me. Now, like I was saying about the camera, a lot of people complain that the camera doesn't take, you know, the best pictures and all that. They, you know, people saying that it's not up there with the iPhone and the, and the Galaxy Note 3 camera. I disagree. I think if you play with the settings, you get beautiful pictures. This is in the candy store right here. You get great pictures, and I haven't even tweaked the settings and all that. Camera pictures come out great. And you have HTC Zoe. Check out my HTC Zoe video I made on the uh, on the M7. HTC Zoe is a fun little feature, and if you play with it, you're going to have a lot of fun with HTC Zoe. One thing I forgot to mention now, the difference between the M7 and the M8, now you don't have these touch capacitive buttons anymore. No more home, no more back button. Now they built into the screen. So let me show you how that works. No buttons at all. These are actually on-screen buttons. So now you have a back button, your home button, and your recently used apps. Now, one thing I will say that's hot about the recently used app sec section that um, is a little bit different from on the M7, now you have one of my favorite things, that X on the top, to close out all the apps at once. You remember before on the M7, you got to swipe each one individually. That was one of my, uh, you know, major things that I don't, I don't like doing because I'd be having so many apps open at the same time. When the phone starts to, you know, lag a little bit or starts to feel a little bit buggy, you want to just close out all your recently used apps. I don't know how much data y'all get, but if you want to, if you worried about data running in the back and all that, every now and then just open it up, close up all your apps. All right, so I'm definitely feeling that feature right there. You got your widgets. I mean, your uh, your power, your power, your quick power tools like your. Uh, Wi-Fi, brightness, settings, screenshot button. I'm definitely feeling that too. Now that's on HTC, that's on the HTC One Max also. I like the little screenshot button. So if I want to take a, a quick screenshot, all I got to do is press the button. Now you can do volume down and power also, but I like having a little screenshot button. It's just a little bit more convenient in my opinion. Now if you can see, I also have my HTC uh, TV remote running. This works flawlessly. Now, I'm not going to make a big video about this and all that, but the ACC remote is a go. Now, it's just like Samsung Watch On, same thing. Change your channels and all that. This is a good look. Right off the back, out of the box, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving this phone a 9. The only thing i found so far that I don't like is the motion gestures don't always work. They work, I would say, 90% of the time, but sometimes they don't work. Now, I don't know if it's because I had so many apps running in the background. We'll see. Let's do some more testing and all that. But sometimes they don't work. 90% of the time they do. Like right now, you see the camera supposed to come on? No camera. So let's open it up. Let's make sure everything is closed and we'll try the camera again. Okay, no apps running. Let's try that again now. Put it in landscape mode. Press the volume button. The camera's supposed to turn on. Now, I'm in full landscape mode. And it doesn't work all the time. Okay, so, is that a big deal? Not really. But, um, you know, like I said, $800 for a phone. You expect everything to work. So, that's one thing I'm not feeling right there is the motion gestures don't always work. But 90% of the time, the one that I use the most does work. And that's just the double tap. So, when we, did, when we get to the real review, hopefully by then, maybe HTC push out an update. Maybe I just had too many apps running. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know, but I'm going to really dive into this phone. I'm going to do some research and see if any... Let me know in the comments, too, if y'all having the same problem. But I noticed that I've seen a, a couple of other dudes having the same problem with the motion gestures. Overall, though, this phone is a go. This is probably going to be my new favorite phone. I'm loving the smoothness of it as far as the multitasking and as far as the ringtone sounds with the loudness of the, the dual speakers, as far as watching videos with that 1080 display, this phone is a go right here. Build quality, build quality, build quality. I can't stress it enough. When you hold this phone in your hand, you're going to feel why I'm saying it's the best built phone. Now, one thing you'll notice that this has the brushed aluminum as opposed to the, uh, the matte finish, which makes the phone very slippery. So this phone, fresh out the box, you're going to be like, yeah, this phone is mad slippery. You're definitely going to want to put a case on this when you're outside at work or you know, when you're doing your thing. In the house, you don't really need a case. But if you're outside and you're going to be all over the place, you might definitely drop this. Now, if you look at my phone, it does look brand new and all of that. But I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. I dropped this out of my pocket. Uh, what's today? Uh, Thursday, Tuesday night. I dropped this out of my pocket. No scratches, no cracks or nothing. 
but the phone dropped out of my pocket. And it was a good size fall, no case on it. So that, you know, a lot of people ask me to do drop tests and all that. I'm not going to do a drop test on camera because I'm not deliberately trying to, you know, make my phone look whack. But, I'm a, you know, people that know me, I know I'm honest with this shit. I dropped the phone, no scratches, no damage at all. But I will be getting some cases. Shout out to everybody who liked the dot view case. I'm definitely getting a dot view case. But that shit is sold out everywhere. Everywhere I looked, all the best buys I went to, dot view case sold out. So we're going to get that next. I got a bunch of cases coming in from Amazon. I'll, uh, you know, I'll make some videos on that. We'll do the camera test probably probably tomorrow, Saturday morning. I'll, I'll do my usual camera test outside with the car. A lot of people say, why do you do the same camera test all the time? Simple. This way, when I do the camera test for this, you watch it. Now, if you want to know which camera is better, this or the Galaxy Note 3 or the M7 or the Galaxy S3, you know, whatever phone that I've reviewed, all of my camera tests are shot in the same, you know, the same lighting, the same block, the same car, the same everything. So this way you can go back and judge for yourself. It's not like I'm just, you know, lazy. I just want to keep filming the same thing over and over, but I'm trying to give you all a baseline so that I can go and compare to all the videos. Size comparison. Let's do a size comparison real quick. Now. This is size uh, comparison with the HTC, with the HTC One Max, which is another one of my favorite phones right here. As y'all can see, the One Max is giant, and here goes the HTC One, the HTC M7, the M8, and the One Max. All right, so M7 is the smallest one, M8 five inches. A lot of people say that you know that's their optimum size or whatever. Me personally, I like the big boy phones. I like them a little bit bigger. So I'm going with the, the One Max for the size, but the One Max doesn't have all the features that the HTC One, the M8 has. Okay, so now a lot of people are going to ask me what's better, the One Max or the HTC One M8. I would say in terms of software, in terms of which phone is a little bit faster, which phone has more features, which phone does more, I'm going to go with the HTC One, the M7, I mean uh, the M8, the new HTC One. But if you just want the big size with the nice speakers and, you know, fingerprint scanner, I've, I eventually learned how to use the fingerprint scanner. Shout out to everybody who's seen the video I did. It was, really wasn't working at first. You really got to take your time when you're setting up the fingerprint scanner, and eventually it does work. But this one doesn't have the unibody design, even though it does have aluminum and does have a premium build to it. It's not as premium build feeling as the M8. All right, we're not going to keep calling these the 1.8, the 1.7. We're just going to call this the M8. And the max all right the m8 in the max this is the last time y'all gonna see my htc m7 i am selling it hit me up on the personal messages if y'all want to if anybody interested in buying it i'm gonna keep it on sale for about maybe about two weeks if nobody's interested then i'll probably just take it to best buy and trade it in for a gift card or whatever but if you are interested i'm selling the one uh htc one the m7 with a whole bunch of accessories you know all the cases every case video that i did basically i'm throwing in with the phone all right, so that's, you know, that's how I do. When I sell my old phones, I sell all the cases with them because what I'm going to do with a whole bunch of old cases. All right, so that's why I got the box. I got everything. Hit me up on the personal message if y'all interested in that. Otherwise, on a scale of 1 to 10, like I said, I'm giving this a 9. This is a definite go right here. Now, should you get this or should you get the Galaxy Note 3? That's what a lot of people ask me also. To be honest, that's all up to you. You know, I can't tell you which phone to get. All I can tell you that. The Galaxy Note 3 is a beast. It has the S Pen on it. Matter of fact, let me pull out my Galaxy Note 3. Let's do a size comparison with that also. Now, this is how your Galaxy Note 3 is going to look next to um next to the HTC One M8. All right, so the Galaxy Note 3 is a lot bigger than the M8. But not as big as the One Max. All right, so you got your One Max. You got your HTC Note 3. Got your... Let's take a look. This is your Galaxy S4. Pretty much same size as Galaxy S4. A little bit bigger though. Okay, you can't wait to get that S5. Then we'll do some real versus tests. And of course, with your um <laughs> with your iPhone. <laughs> iPhone is so cute, right? Uh, it's a little bit smaller than the M8. Okay, but in terms of build quality. You know, you know, you, you know, I tease Apple a lot and I make fun of the iPhones a lot. But um, iPhone has a superior build to pretty much everything on the market other than this HTC. iPhone build is a win right here. But top of the food chain, the HTC One M8, best built phone out. All right. Nice camera, banging speakers, external memory, 
super fast processor. This phone is an all-around win. You don't even have to wait for me to do the real review. This phone is an all-around win. If you don't use the motion gestures, then you won't even care about all that stuff I was saying about the motion gestures. You won't even care about that. But this feature you do use a lot, though. When you pull the phone out of your pocket, a lot of times, especially if you have small hands, it's a little bit cumbersome trying to get to the top. So if you got small hands, you just pull out the phone, double tap it, check your notifications, swipe to your blink feed, swipe back and forth, whatever. The one feature I would like to see work flawlessly, though, is the immediate camera. You see, now it worked just now. I would like to see that work flawlessly because when you're outside and the shit is going down, you don't have time to be <laughs> going into your phone trying to get to your camera. You might miss that knockout punch that we all want to see. <laughs> all right. So that's one thing I would like to see change. But like I said, all in all, this phone is a major, major win right here. Super smooth. Hasn't lagged out on me yet. Only lag is on the motion features. Like I said, 90% of the time they work. 10% of the time they don't work. Maybe an update will fix that and they'll work 100% of the time. All right. I'll do the real review next week, like I said, and we'll get into all the features. We'll get into Zoe. We'll do some test shots with the camera. We'll, you know, we'll do some comparisons and we'll get busy with it. But just out the box, all in all, this is a phone that you want. If you like HTC, if you had a good time with the HTC M7, if you was thinking about getting the uh, HTC One Max and you're not sure which HTC One you want to get, I'm going to tell you if you like if you like big phones then get the Max but if you just want the top of the line top of the food chain top dog out right now get the HTC One the M8 All right now it depends now it depends on your pockets the M7 it's still a top dog phone also. This phone is still one of my favorite phones. It's a shame I have to break it out of my rotation. But um, my sprint rotation only consists of four phones. So I got to keep my Galaxy Note 3. I got to keep my One Max. I got my Galaxy S4. I'm going to get rid of this one when the S5 comes out. So these are like the two ones that got to go down. And this will be my four phones from Sprint. My Note 3, my Max, my M8, and I get the S5. From Verizon, I still got my Verizon BlackBerry, and I still I always keep a Verizon iPhone. That's how it is. One thing I forgot to mention also on this phone, this phone has Sprint Spark. All right, so this is one of the newer phones. You got the LG G Flex. You got the HTC One Max that has Sprint Spark. Now, Spark works in my neighborhood. I don't know where you live at, but Spark works fine in my neighborhood. And to be honest with y'all, a lot of times, the Sprint Spark works better than uh, I get better reception than I get on my Verizon iPhone. All right, so a lot of times I get better reception, I get better call quality with Sprint Spark than Verizon. You heard me say that. So Sprint Spark, they doing their thing right now. You, I, I, a lot of cats that have been sticking with Sprint over the years, and you know they kept saying they're gonna upgrade the network, they're gonna do this and do that. I'm glad I stayed with Sprint because now my HTC One Max has Sprint Spark, my M8 has Sprint Spark, and all their new phones coming out gonna have Sprint Spark. So that's a good look right there. Hopefully, now as far as accessories. Hopefully, HTC, now I don't see why they wouldn't, hopefully HTC comes out with the best case on the market, which right now is the power flip case. Shout out to everybody who's seen the video I did for this. This is absolutely, without a doubt, the best case on the market. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. Check out the battery on my phone right now, right? Full charge. That's all you, let, let's clear the notifications real quick so you can get a good look at this. All right? All right, here we go. All right, so now let's plug the case into the phone. Plug the phone into the case, whichever way you want to call it. Once you do that, you see now you get another battery icon that popped up. So when I swipe down, let me just clear this voicemail real quick. All right, when I swipe down, now it says power flip case in use. And that's, those bars indicate how much power I have in the power flip case. Mm. So now when the M8 gets this case, First, you know, I didn't really talk about the battery too much in this. Now, let me just explain something. I watched a lot of videos on this because, you know, I, I like to watch videos just like y'all. You know what I'm saying? Before I buy a product, I like to watch videos on it too. I hear a lot of people saying with this phone, they've been getting 15 hours of heavy use, 20 hours of heavy use. Um, if I even heard some people say 25 to 30 hours of heavy use. That's a, that, that, that's not happening. All right. we Everybody knows that. People like to exaggerate. When I say heavy use, y'all, heavy use doesn't mean just checking your phone for emails, you know, tweeting here and there, using Instagram and watching a video too. No. If you're an online warrior like me and you be, you know, beasting on your phone, I'm talking about watching Netflix, watching YouTube videos all day long, 
checking your Instagram every 15, 20 minutes, tweeting all day, checking in on Foursquare all day, looking at Facebook posts all day long, you know, searching, searching Google for different products, checking your emails. If you're doing that all day long, you'll be able to get six to eight hours of heavy use on this phone. And that's what all your settings stock. Now, if you do some battery tricks, as far as turning the brightness all the way down, turning off your push notifications, doing this, doing that, yeah, then you'll be able to get, you know, eight to 10 hours out of it without a problem. But there's no way you're getting 20 hours of heavy use off the stock battery on this. It's not happening. All right, so let's be clear about that. It's not happening. But hopefully HTC will come out with the power flip case. When they do, I'm definitely getting that, and that's gonna make this phone untouchable. All right, that's because that's, that's, you know, once you get a, a bigger battery on this phone, because, you know, it's unibody design, so you can't put extended battery on it, you gotta walk around with battery charges and all that. Once you get the power flip case, HTC, if you're listening, make the power flip case for this M8, and it will be definitely untouchable. Well, like I said, until I get the S5, until, you know, Note 4, until all of these other phones come out. Right now, as far as Sprint goes, this is the top dog on Sprint right now, besides the Galaxy Note 3. So you got the Galaxy Note 3 and you got the M8. You got the Galaxy S4. Yeah, that's, you know, it is what it is. The S5 comes out. We'll get into that. A lot of people ask me, why didn't I get the HTC, the, um, uh, not the HTC, the LG G Flex? Well... I can't stand the buttons on the back. That's one thing. I, I, I tried to. I went there the day phone, the phone came. The, the, <laughs> hold on a second. The day the phone came out. I'm trying to I'm trying to speed this up real quick because I know I've been talking for a minute. The day the phone came out, I went to go get it. The HTC, the, the LG G Flex. I went to go get it. After playing with it in the store, I really can't stand that button on the back. The build on the phone is just extra cheap feeling. Like, you know, even though it's supposed to flex, so of course it's going to be plastic, but it just feels extra cheap. Now, it has a 6-inch display, which is really, you know, big, even though it's not 1080, it's 720. To the naked eye, can you see that? Yes, you can. The phone looks a little bit darker. Some of the colors look a little washed out. But the point is, I wasn't about to spend $800 for a phone that I can't stand the button placement. The phone, the, the build quality feels cheap to it. And accessories, they don't have too many accessories for the, for the G Flex, so that's why I passed on that. So far, I've already seen a bunch of accessories for this phone. Like I said, we'll get into all of those as they start coming in. So let's wrap this up. Scale of 1 to 10, this is a 9. This is a win. Floss factor right here, major floss factor. All right, when you pull this out, everybody's going to see the unibody. If you get the amber gold one, you know, do that too. That's going to be even more, <laughs> even more. But um, everybody knows this is the new one, the build quality. Nobody's touching you right now when you pull this out as far as build quality. Nobody. So should I recommend this phone? Hell yeah. All right, this is a definite recommendation from me. If you never played with this phone, go in the store, play with it for yourself. You'll fall in love with it, trust me. Speakers on the front, you'll definitely fall in love with those too. Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Shout out to all the Google gangsters I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at. Full time, 100%. Full throttle. We having mad fun. It's your boy Floss. I'm going to catch up with y'all on the next trip. Like I said, next week I'll be back with a real review. I got a whole bunch of products here I'm going to try to get into. I just been so busy, you know, shit starting to back up, at, you know, on my desk. But um, I got a whole bunch of cases and I got more chargers. I got more screen protectors. I got everything in here that I'm about to get into next week. So we do that when we do it. Let me get out of here. Oh, yeah. Before I go. <laughs> Almost forgot. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, go eat a fucking dick, all right? Now, I just got a Voxer. Now, I got to step my, shout out to my man, Sam Patterson. I got to step my Voxer game up. People do be hitting me up on Voxer. I just got to start using Voxer more. If it's Everybody who follow me on Twitter, I just said a couple of days ago, I'm going to start using Twitter at least once or twice a day. I got to step my social game up. I do be on Instagram every day, all day. But I got to step up my Google+, Plus. I got to step up my Facebook, I got to step up my Twitter, and I got to step up my Voxer. So, shout out to Sam. I'm about to hit you back in a minute, and we get out of here. All right? It's your boy Floss. I'll catch up with y'all on the next trip. I'm out. Deuces.